CBS News Detroit, we've been covering the mental health crisis across the state extensively for the last several months, highlighting resources and also families in Metro Detroit who need to meet, get that information. We're getting that to them. You're right. But tonight, Terrence, we are taking a look at a different side of the crisis, introducing you to a mother who says that her family is on the brink of tragedy, but nobody is listening to her cry for help. Now, a warning to our viewers, what you are about to see is disturbing. A Michigan mother who says the state's lack of mental health care is setting her child up for a tragedy. Preventable. This is preventable and no one's helping prevent it. Cam Romanelli, an adoptive single mother of four siblings, now ages 10 through 15, says one of her children is putting lives in danger because of aggressive mental health issues that are continuing to get worse. He broke his doors. He put holes in the walls, like one foot by one foot holes in the walls broke his door off the hinges, smashed the dressers, smashed the TV, gaming centers, everything downstairs. Through Health West, the community mental health provider in Muskegon, Michigan, her son has been hospitalized for mental health evaluations, but ultimately she says he is always sent home. He um, had to be restrained and sedated because he became so aggressive with the hospital staff. He was threatening to kill me, threatening to kill them. Mm -hmm. um, threatening to punch out the window there. So they had to restrain and sedate him. So the wraparound supervisor came out to bring him home and we all sat around the table and talked. And I said, my concern is that he's going to continue the same stuff that he's been doing. Like he told me every day at Pine Rest, like when I talked to him, I'm going to continue breaking things in your home and I'm going to continue being assaultive and, until I get what I want. Like I'm not going to stop. Just as Cam predicted, she says his behavior became worse. She says he broke a window in a fit of rage and the following day acted out even more. He came in and started um, breaking stuff downstairs again. So I had immediately went downstairs and said, like, we're not doing this. You need to stop. And my youngest followed me downstairs and she was screaming, like, you know, don't stop. Like he was punching holes in the wall. And then he had started walking towards her. So I'd pushed him back away from her and I was screaming at her to go upstairs and have her sister call 911. And that's when he started like punching and hitting me. I was holding his arms down, screaming for the other kids to call 911, was taking stuff and throwing it across the room at me. And then he ripped the plastic off his window. So like the night before, we just put plastic over the window. I didn't clean up any of the glass. Like I was at the hospital part of the night and came home and took care of the other kids. So he had ripped off the plastic and he's like, I'm gonna slice your throats and I'm gonna slice my sister's throat. And he was grabbing the glass out of the window. And at that point I ran back upstairs and called 911 again. Cam says her son wasn't taken to the hospital that time. He wound up in juvenile detention and in a few weeks, he could be returned home. While trying to advocate for a residential treatment facility for her son, she says the mental health resource officer through Health West, also known as the Wraparound Services Coordinator, said they will not support residential treatment. My understanding is that CMH Community Mental Health um, is pushing for him to return home. They will not recommend residential for him. I don't I'm, understand why. I don't agree with it, but they will not. They've made it very clear they will not recommend residential for him. Their job what, is to keep them in the community. What is your understanding of the safety plan? It's a box they have to check. But they're saying if we give him a visual chart, then he'll know what he has to do all day, and then he'll just magically not act out. I was texting in a group chat, the Health West workers, his therapist and wraparound. Wraparound suggested um, turning on his favorite movie and seeing if he recognizes it and would come upstairs, which is kind of silly. I, I don't feel like any safety plan we've done has actually made me or my family feel any safer. Mm -hmm. The safety plan so. centers around and it involves him using coping skills such as deep breathing. He doesn't use coping skills, he refuses to. So it's not, it's not realistic. 
Should her son be released and Cam refuses to take him home? My understanding is that CPS would get involved and remove all of the children from me because that would be neglect at that point. How do the children feel now? They're, they're scared. It's their brother and they love him, but they're mm -hmm. also terrified of him coming home. And my 10 year old was asking me in the car the other day, what happens if we come home and Chase has killed you? What do I do to keep my younger sister safe? I cannot believe a 10 year old would ask you that. But, but she's not wrong. I mean, she said, well, oh. she's not very quick. If I have to get her upstairs to our bedroom to lock the door, like she doesn't move fast. Like, how am I going to protect her? I don't even know what to say. I mean, it, none of that makes sense. I agree. This is the issue I'm having is no one is hearing what I'm saying. I feel it's a safety concern for the community. He's talked about school shootings. He's talked about shooting up the neighborhood. The schools had to implement a safety plan that they pat search them daily. So when I had relayed all of this to the school and said, like, I have concerns, he said he he has been obsessed with school shootings. It's documented, like the, the vice principal had called me over a year ago and said he's talking to other kids about school shootings. I reached out to Fruitport Middle School's principal, Monty Kelly, with Cam copied, providing permission for us to speak to confirm that pat down safety plan and to find out whether other parents are aware that one parent is saying their student is threatening to hurt others. I was told via email in part, I unfortunately am unable to comment on student records. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't feel like there is any adequate safety plan. He's using glass out of a broken window. Like he's using yeah. metal bars, he breaks off his shelves. Like how do I keep me or the other kids safe when he is so adamant someone is going to get hurt or die? To get a better idea of the safety plan, I also reached out to Health West for an interview. Once again, with Cam Copied giving her permission for discussion. Gary Ridley, the communications and advocacy coordinator replied saying, HIPAA prevents us from disclosing if someone is receiving services through Health West or sharing information on any services they may receive. However, if you would like to learn more about wraparound services, I encourage you to check out section 3.29 of the Michigan Medicaid Provider Manual. So I did. According to that manual, children will be provided, quote, highly individualized planning processes facilitated by specialized support coordinators, so I asked Bob Wheaton, the public information officer with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, if he could provide some insight. I received a lengthy response that you can read in its entirety at cbsdetroit.com, but it says in part, the MDHHS is committed to helping children, youth, and their families get the behavioral health care they need when they need it. That includes when a child and family is experiencing a behavioral health crisis. I just don't feel, feel like, like we should uh, have to wait till someone dies to get him help. It's very reactive and not proactive. He needs help. He needs help. Well, this has been ongoing and Cam invited me to her son's wraparound services meeting over Zoom as one of her support members. But after identifying myself as who I am, I was told that meeting would not continue if I was present. Although Cam said she would prefer that I be on the call, she did decide to continue without me. She says after I left the meeting, the staff abruptly ended it and have since told her via text that all of her support people must be screened for approval and no media are allowed. Cam has since filed a grievance with the Regional Mental Health Office for what she calls bullying and unfair practices. She is still waiting to hear from the state on the next step, but her son's care, she says, he could be returning home within the next month. Now, as disturbing as this is, the Romanelli family is not alone. We have a growing list of Michigan families in very similar crises, saying that they're not, be, they're not being given the services that they should be through Medicaid, and they are living in fear of a disaster. And a minor update, Terrence, she is going to have a meeting, um, I believe, with Health West tomorrow. We'll see what, it, what comes out of that. But yeah. as of now... Um, Nobody's willing to talk to us, even with Cam on the line. So all that kind of says is, what? Yeah. What do we do? We can 
only hope that she can get the help that she needs because they clearly so desperately need it. Yes, and we have more of these stories to come, sadly. So we'll be following it as it goes. All right, Amir, thank you.